Hi, it's Patrick Hutzel from IntensiveCareHotline.com where we instantly improve the lives for families of critically ill patients in intensive care so that you can make informed decisions, have peace of mind, real power, real control and so that you can influence decision making fast even if you're not a doctor or a nurse in intensive care. This is another episode of Your Questions Answered and in last week's episode I answered another question from one of our readers and the question last week was thank you for keeping me going my 64 year old sister has Legionella's disease and has been in an induced coma for six weeks the doctors wanted to withdraw treatment but we stood firm and now my sister can live what should we do next you can check out the answer to last week's question by clicking on the link below this video in this week's episode of Your Questions Answered, I want to answer another question from one of our readers. And the question this week is, My brother is in ICU with cardiac arrest, abdominal sepsis, ventilated and in an induced coma. Will he need a tracheostomy? This question from Prim has been part of an email counselling and consulting session with me. Prim writes, Hi Patrick, I need your urgent advice. I'm very worried about my brother who went into hospital with abdominal pain and was diagnosed with diverticulitis. We have been told that he had a minor heart attack, also septic shock and peritonitis. He was transferred to another hospital where they operated on him and they found he had an abscess in his abdomen. He was put in an induced coma and on artificial ventilation since last Tuesday. It has been six days now since he was operated on. They are trying to wean him off the ventilator. From what we have been told, he has opened his eyes and cried. He's breathing 60% by himself and 40% by the ventilator. They are gradually reducing the sedation. He became very agitated and when they first removed the ventilator he had a cardiac arrest so they had to put him back on the ventilator. He also has a fever and chest infection and today they have started him on antibiotics. My main concern is that they are going to perform a tracheostomy without giving the antibiotics a chance to work and also not giving him enough time to be weaned off the ventilator. Six days seems too short as he's not breathing by himself. With a chest infection, his lungs are not strong enough to cope with breathing. Surely they need to see if the antibiotics work and he gets strong enough to breathe by himself. The problem as I see is they have made a decision to do a tracheostomy without giving us all the risks and options. They have told my sister-in-law that it will be for 48 hours and it will heal. I'm not sure this is correct. Should we ask them to delay doing the tracheostomy by seven days to see if he's strong enough to breathe by himself? How long does he have to live with the tracheostomy? Many things looking forward to hearing from you. Prim. Here is my response. Hi Prim, thank you for your question and thank you for using my email counseling and consulting services. I'm very sorry to hear what you and your family are going through with your brother. And congratulations for seeking advice and not just relying on what the intensive care team is telling you. The main thing that stands out to me here, Prim, is that your brother still has a chest infection and that he had a cardiac arrest after his first attempt to remove him from the ventilator, which is also called extubation. A cardiac arrest is most likely why the intensive care team may want to do a tracheostomy in the first place. What also stands out to me is that your brother had a minor heart attack in the beginning and the cardiac arrest unfortunately would have caused some more damage on his heart. But let's look at the bigger picture as well. Your brother went into hospital with abdominal pain which turned out to be diverticulitis and peritonitis. Peritonitis is abdominal sepsis and was most likely caused 
by the diverticulitis and the diverticulitis is actually an inflammation of a diverticulum which is a small part of the bowel especially in the colon which is a part of the bowel as well and it's causing pain and disturbance of bowel function. Your brother had to have bowel surgery and the peritonitis was confirmed by the abscess they have found. This is obviously a major concern and a major cause of the sepsis and the subsequent septic shock. On top of that your brother has a chest infection which he's on antibiotics for. Your brother would also be on antibiotics for the peritonitis. Given his various sources of infection he would be on a few antibiotics. Furthermore, even though it's very likely that he has a septic shock from the chest infection and the peritonitis, he might also have a cardiogenic shock from the heart attack and the cardiac arrest. Therefore, your brother would have sustained hypotension, which is low blood pressure, and is most likely on inotropes to stabilize him and resuscitate him. Inotropes are intravenous medications to maintain a good blood pressure and increase the contractility of the heart which is really important after cardiac arrest and a heart attack. Therefore the issue of performing a tracheostomy or not can't be looked at in isolation. Whilst you are absolutely correct to say that your brother should be given more time before performing a tracheostomy, what might work against him is that he has had one failed extubation already that caused him to go into cardiac arrest. So again, an extubation is a removal of the breathing tube and the endotracheal tube. When critically ill patients in intensive care are failing extubation, again, which is the removal of the ventilator and the breathing tube, the risk for patients to get a tracheostomy is increased. Lowering sedation and see how your brother is coping to get out of the induced coma makes sense. Normally a tracheostomy should be performed after 7 to 14 days of ventilation with a breathing tube or an endotracheal tube. Endotracheostomy once inserted might stay for many days, weeks or sometimes even months. Therefore it makes perf perfect sense that you want to make an informed decisions, decision before you give consent to a tracheostomy. I have inserted some links to some articles why patients need a tracheostomy in intensive care. Check out those links in the written version of this blog below this video. Moreover, the heart attack and the cardiac arrest may put further strain on your brother. Let me explain. Cardiac arrest and or a heart attack weaken the heart. Therefore, your brother may have an increased risk of getting fluid overloaded on his chest and his lungs due to the heart being weakened and potentially decompensated. This could potentially get your brother into pulmonary edema which is fluids on the lungs. Normally this is treated with diuretics which is medication to increase urine output and offload fluids and also inotropes for strengthening the heart and increased blood pressure. Your brother would have most likely also had an echocardiogram or a toe for his heart after the heart attack and after the cardiac arrest. Both procedures are basically an ultrasound of the heart. In the echocardiogram or the toe they would have been able to determine your brother's ejection fraction which is the measurement of the heart's ability to pump blood. After cardiac arrest and or a heart attack there is a chance that your brother's ejection fraction has been lowered and again the risk for going into pulmonary edema again which is fluids on the chest or on the lungs is increased. With all of this in mind you now have the bigger picture what needs to be considered from a clinical point of view, or point of view before a decision is being made. And I agree with you that they should try and extubate your brother again before performing a tracheostomy. Many critically ill patients before getting a tracheostomy may well go through a couple of failed extubations in order to be sure that a tracheostomy is the right thing to do. 
and you are right that doing a tracheostomy after only six days is potentially too early, especially since they haven't explained the bigger picture to you. Again, I have put an, a link to an article and a video about the risks and benefits of a tracheostomy below this video. Overall, the next steps for your brother are Clear the infection in his bowels and on his chest with antibiotics. Manage the weakness of the heart with inotropes. Again, inotropes are medications to increase blood pressure and improve the contractility of the heart. The next step for your brother is get out of the induced coma. Try and extubate. Again, if your brother is waking up after the induced coma within the next few days. Next, no matter how much you want to speed up your brother's recovery, he will take much he will take as much time as he needs. Next, it's very rare that you can speed up waking up. After an induced coma, your brother will need time. Again, if your brother isn't waking up quickly from the induced coma, it increases the likelihood of him needing a tracheostomy. Next, if your brother's heart is weak with poor ejection fraction as well as ongoing chest infection, it'll increase the risk of him getting a tracheostomy. Both infections, the chest infection and the peritonitis, are making it more likely to delay waking up for your brother after the induced coma. Normally, six days after surgery and not waking up is almost a normal time frame in ICU terms. However, the failed extubation as well as the cardiac arrest and the heart attack have increased the likelihood for your brother needing a tracheostomy. I really hope this helps Prim. Please let me know if you have any other questions. I wish you and your family all the very best. So how can you become the best advocate for your critically ill loved one, make informed decisions, get peace of mind, control power and influence quickly whilst your loved one is critically ill in intensive care. You get to that all-important feeling of making informed decisions, get peace of mind, control, power and influence when you download your free instant impact report now by entering your email below. In your free instant impact report you learn quickly how to make informed decisions, get peace of mind real power and real control and how you can influence decision making fast whilst your loved one is critically ill in intensive care. Your free instant impact report gives you in-depth insight that you must know whilst your loved one is critically ill or is even dying in intensive care. Sign up and download your free instant impact report now by entering your email below. In your free instant impact report, you learn how to speak the secret intensive care language so that the doctors and the nurses know straight away that you are an insider and that you know and understand what's really happening in intensive care. In your free report, you will also discover how to ask the doctors and the nurses the right questions. Discover the many competing interests in intensive care and how your Critically ill loved one's treatment may depend on those competing interests. How to eliminate fear, frustration, stress, struggle and vulnerability even if your loved one is dying. You get five mind-blowing tips and strategies helping you to get on the right path to making informed decisions, get peace of mind, control, power and influence in your situation. You'll get real-world examples that you can easily adapt to your and your critically ill loved one's situation. How to stop being intimidated by the intensive care team and how you will be seen as equals. You'll get crucial behind-the-scenes insight so that you know and understand what's really happening in intensive care. And how you need to manage doctors and nurses in intensive care. And it's not what you think. Thank you for tuning into this week's Your Questions Answered episode and I'll see you again next week in another update. 
Make sure you also check out our blog section for more tips and strategies or simply send me an email to support at intensivecarehotline.com with your questions. Or you can call me, find international phone numbers on our contacts tab. Also, check out our ebook section where you get more ebooks, videos, and audio recordings, and where you can also get one on one counseling and consulting with me via Skype over the phone or via email by clicking on the products tab. This is Patrick Hutzel from IntensiveCareOutland.com, and I'll see you again next week in another update.